I want you to turn with me to the book of Acts and those of you online rejoice with us. Amen. We are praying. You must overcome all the enemy is trying to throw at you. And I have heard stories of very sad people who will not talk, people who will not, I mean, all over the world, who will not take the vaccination. And finally, the virus caught up with them. Because it's going to go into a herd immunity. <clears throat> and they are not vaccinated. When I was not vaccinated, the virus got me. And I'm not like 80, 90 years old. I'm just 65. Man, it takes a toll on my body. So there are people now all over the world who don't, from Hong Kong, America, Malaysia, they're afraid that if I take the vaccination, I'm 80 years old, I will get a heart attack and die. Well, it's better you take the chance and get the vaccination because the virus will eventually caught up with you. They thought they are hiding in the kampong or in that way out area. But one of those people, visitors or whoever, their own children, will bring back the virus to them. And today, they are struggling in the breathing. I pray for people like that. You know, I have good friends. They are loved ones, 40 some years old. Never take vaccination, get the virus, bye bye. 40 some years old, way younger than me. So don't get into the Antichrist and all that, you know, doctrine, because God knows this one through. A virus is a virus. Science will tell you, and we have to accept sign. We cannot ignore it and push away the doctor, push away the medicine. You cannot do that. So my advice to you, if you have not get the vaccination, as I told someone, their heart is not strong enough. They say, I will go and see the doctor and get the advice. And, then I need, and so they took their first injection. So please, God wants you to be in good health, protected. But God wants to do his part. You got to do your part. Don't leave it to faith. Faith without works is dead. Turn with me to the book of Acts. God bless you. And we are so excited. Everyone is doing good. And we want to continue to move forward. In Acts chapter 10, in verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, not possessed, uh, oppressed. For God was with him. I want to speak to you this morning. The enemy wants you to be under guilt and condemnation. The devil, the enemy, he wants you to live your life under guilt and condemnation. And we know the word of God say, if you are in Christ, there is no condemnation. So this morning, I want to speak to you and hope and pray that you will allow your mind to be touched by God. Don't live under the enemy's guilt and condemnation. Peter described Jesus as the one who went about doing good. We need to understand this morning, God do not punish you because he feels like it. God do not get you into an accident because he feels good about it. But the Bible say, Jesus, the three and a half years of his ministry. So we have to live our life our given life by coming out of the enemy's guilt and condemnation. We have to. It is your choice. And I'm going to show you that you are your own will, your own person. You are in control. No doubt God wants to guide and lead you. But at the end of the day, I want you to know, you are in control of what you will choose and decide. And everyone say amen. 
There is a story in uh, Luke chapter 12. You know, life is such. I don't care whether you have come from a big family or a small family. Because here in Luke chapter 12, when Jesus was going about doing good, helping everyone, healing everyone, setting free everyone, suddenly out of the crowd, and this is what happened, but in Luke chapter 12, verse 13, he says here, one of the company, that means one of the person out in the crowd said to Jesus, Master, speak to my brother that he divide the inheritance with me. Can you imagine? Here is Jesus is going about and doing good and helping people. Suddenly, out in the crowd, someone Jesus, Master, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. What a strange question. Obviously, these two brothers have problem. The family give them some inheritance. This brother don't want to share with the other brother. And suddenly, publicly, can you imagine? Can you imagine? If Serena shout out to Jesus, Jesus, thou cannot to divide the inheritance with me. My parent left this house in Putrajaya. Give half to me. Can I say, no, 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 no. It's my, I'm the male. Doctor don't have any inheritance. You know what Jesus said? Okay, let's look. Let's look. It's very interesting. And so here, in verse 14, Jesus said to him, man. You know, Jesus didn't even say sir or anything. Jesus called this fellow man. Man, that means human. Orang. Not orang utang. Orang, man. And then Jesus said in verse 14, man who make me a judge or a divider over you. And then Jesus went on to say in verse 15, take heed, beware of covetousness, for a man's life consisted not in the abundance of things which he possesses. So Jesus obviously saw here is a situation that there was unfairness between these two brothers. And one is telling Jesus, you better tell, you know, you go about doing good. He's right, he tried to pull Jesus into his relationship, his affair with his brother. He felt cheated. He felt not fair. He felt half of his mind, but he, he never even shared it. And Jesus started to tell a parable. So what is happening here? One fellow feel angry, cheated. Deprive, don't have, receive less. The other fellow say, it's not yours, it's mine. Mama, Papa sign all to me and I will not share with you. Even if you're my brother, so what? When it comes to money, no relationship counts. I don't care you're my father. I don't care you're my brother or my sister. It's, it's come to a point that bad and the other fellow was feeling bad. He's feeling condemned. The other fellow, don't, he don't feel guilt over it. But the other fellow, he is so unhappy. You see, life, in your life, in my life, the devil wants to put things that doesn't go eternal to become a big issue. I mean, so what if you get, you know, like some of the richest men, they own the big property with the big name. You know, we have a lot of big names here in Malaysia. They can own a whole place. They develop into a city. But where are they today? They can't take those things with them. And then the worst part is the children fight over it. Go to the court and ask the judge and ask the lawyer, Brother Elfon, shoot him. Take I one half his mind. You see, they are fighting over something 
which in eternity don't count. So I want to alert you today. Guilt and condemnation does not come from God. And God said, I'm not going to be the judge. I'm not going to condemn you. I'm not going to judge you. But I want you to know the devil, the enemy, to come destroy you between your brothers. Destroy you between your sisters. Destroy you with one another. From when come the strife, the division? From when comes all this? We need to understand it is from the enemy. And once the enemy gets you into feeling guilty, condemned over irrelevant things, which in eternity is going to count, not going to count, why waste time on it? That's why Jesus said, I must be among my father's business. Don't waste time over petty issues. God would say, because of, you know, the devil wanting to devour your lives, he's trying to keep you from the joy of living in the goodness of the Lord. We sang the song. You know, you and I, when we live for Jesus, we want to live in the goodness of God, the relationship. We don't want it to be tarnished. We don't want anything to come and put us under guilt and condemnation. That's why God's word say, you don't want to hang around people who are always angry. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 24. If you hang around people always not happy, angry, their spirit is going to jump on you. Do you know that? And that's why the parents take my advice. Got to be very careful. If the parent is always angry and, and not happy and not, not contented, you're going to pass the spirit to your children. And your children, the next generation, is going to continue that. It's a spirit. Every one of us has got a spirit. It is called the human spirit. And Jesus has come to help your human spirit. That your human spirit will not be affected. Whether you say not fair. Whether you say this is not right. Whether you say how come like this. We need to take everything to God in prayers. And that's why it's important. No point you take it to God in prayers and then you still come out condemned and guilty. Whereas God wants to set you free. You need to live the life of joy, of righteousness, of happiness, of being free from all condemnation. That's why when someone who wanted to follow Jesus, people accuse him, this fellow, he cheated us. He's a tax collector. And Jesus, you know, don't, don't receive him. Jesus say, I will still go to him. But this guy, he did something. He said, Jesus, because I want a relationship with you, if I cheated the fly, I give him four times back. Now, why does he want to give four times? Not one time, but he give four times back. He do not want to live his life in condemnation that people are accusing him. You know, people will have many things about you. That's why it is so important that if you want to grow spiritually, if you want to go higher, if you want to be successful, you need to hang around wise people, Proverbs said. When you hang around wise people, they will transfer wisdom to you. You will become wise. Iron sharpen iron. You don't want to hang around people. It's not them to be blamed. You know, because they themselves are struggling. They themselves are in bitterness and in happiness. And if you hang around them, they are going to affect you. Because the birds of the same feather is going to fly together. So you might as well make up your mind and say, sorry, brother, sorry, sister. I got better thing to do. God bless you. Yes. That means you take yourself out and you want to attach yourself to people who are successful to people that can help you and inspire you and make you rise higher. Amen. That's why it is important. Influence is very powerful. 
who is influencing you? If the people that is negative influencing you, you are in big trouble. Because then you become negative like them. Yeah? Die lah. Cannot lah. Impossible lah. You are going to get into be like them. And so you don't want them. You don't want this kind of company. If you have in your office people that are always complaining about the boss, complaining about the job, complaining about the management of the system, don't spend your time with those people. I work in a company, competition is so bad. I work in a sales department. The account department also jamming. And then the production department also jamming. And every department, the delivery department, don't want to deliver my goods because they were angry with me. They say, you think you're a super salesman. Huh? Let's see, I don't want to send your goods. They, they dare to do that. And because it's related to my boss, my boss cannot do anything. It's the uncle. You know what I did? I never let the guy affect me. I was not angry. I did not complain. I did not tell the boss. I said, no problem. I went to the production. Where's the goods? It's here, 200 kilo. I load it into my Toyota car. I don't know if the police catch me, I have to pay the fine. So I load 200 kilo into the, the trunk of the car and I take it to my customer. My customer was shocked. How come your delivery truck not here? How come you're delivering? I say, well, my delivery man is sick. Sick in the spirit. Not physically sick, but sick in the spirit. So I say, he's sick. So I'm there. Wow. And you know, because of my attitude, I did not let it affect me. I was blessed by my customer. My customer say, next time when you leave the company, you start your own company, I want you. Because you have integrity. Because you take care of my goods. Not allowing guilt or condemnation disturb this delivery process. I went through it, folks. I knew what I'm talking. And God bless me. And so you need to hang around people that inspire and help you. Don't hang around people that are losers. Sorry, I have to use the word loser. There are people, they don't want to be winner. And so they are always losing. They are losing out in their relationship. They are losing out in their life. They are losing out. You see, every one of us must take account of ourselves. Things will go around bad everywhere. In the Bible already tell us. But you, how you react, that is important. Because you are going to decide whether you go up or you go down. Here is the papaya tree story again. I have to use that because every morning I deal with papaya trees. In fact, my, my wife said, Somehow the papaya got into your brain. I say, I found out. This morning, someone received papayas from me. I know you'll say, what about me? Later. The tree is bending a bit, but it's still full of papayas. I don't know how high the tree will still go. It's still holding out. My papaya tree, after I enjoy eating that, Sister Frida will tell you, it's so sweet. Isn't it, Sister Frida? Sister Frida, where are you? Sister Frida said, if you decide to sell it, I'll be your first customer. That's what she said. Ah, so I take the fruit, cut it open, and I eat the seed. So I didn't know. Here is six tall papaya trees. I, I, I throw the seed underneath all these big papaya trees. I didn't know. All these papaya trees are already tall and having fruits. And the seeds sprout out. And the papaya shoot cannot it became very thin. The leaves, the branch cannot. And then I was wondering. And then suddenly, in my mind, starting, I go and Google. You say, if you plant something underneath bigger tree, they hide the sunlight. They cannot receive the sunlight. They are going to, going to be strong papaya tree. That means the little papaya tree overshadowed by the bigger papaya tree. Same thing with your life. God is telling you, you don't want to allow someone hindering you from becoming a fruitful papaya tree. Because this fellow is overshadowing you with all this nonsense. 
that doesn't help you. And you're wondering why my life got no fruits. Huh? Why? Huh? So you need to get out away from this bigger papaya tree that is oversharing. And then you start to bloom. You see, we need to live our life free from guilt and condemnation. That's what I found out. And you are in charge of yourself. You know? Condemnation is out there. Unhealthiness is out there. People not feeling happy is out there. <coughs> and even they are right now sitting beside you. But that's them. The problem is not them. The problem is me. If you allow it to affect you, you are not going to go forward. You are going to be stuck in your life. And God, what God wants to do for you, you cannot because you are, you are still hanging around underneath the hindrance. I have lived my life, whether working in the secular job, whether in the organization as a bishop, as a general superintendent, whether I have leaders over me, there is no one perfect. Not even yourself. But because we want to live our life according to the word of God. And I say it again, Proverbs will teach you many things. So you stay away from people that are not going to inspire you and help you. That's why I stay away from them. Not because I don't like them. I leave them to God. I cannot help them. I cannot change them. Because there are people too long already. You just got to leave them. But you got to move forward. Because you want God to use you. You want God to bless you. You can let them pull you down. And then what you do? You spend all your whole life gossiping. Complaining, you know, this law. You know, that law. You remember in the Bible, the guy, for how many years? Huh? For 30 years? 20 years? 38 years. Half of his life. No one take me, la, you know, to queen. Everything the angels suddenly do that. And, you know, I, look at me. I mean, he go 101 things to justify. And Jesus just said, you want to be healed or not? That's all. That's yes or no. It's the same with us. And there are people, they're enjoying their life. You ask Brother Jin Ho here. He's enjoying his life. Come on, Brother Jin Ho. You don't need to testify and tell people how good God is. This guy never let anybody affect him. I tell you. But you ask him, do you see trouble? Or, yeah, you see. Man, you go back KK or he's here in West Malaysia. But you just move forward. You need to do that. And if you think your brothers, sisters, your family members, the pastors, the church, hogwash. American will say, you need to take control that I want to be free from condemnation. I want to be free from guilt. I got to take charge of him. Do you want to be healed? Yes, Jesus, I want to be healed. Heal from all this rottenness of the world that the devil has brought. There are a number of things that the devil wants to affect your life because the Bible says what? He comes to steal in your life. He comes to kill and he comes to destroy. That means all these are not good. All these are bad things. Now I'm going to bring it down so that you wonderful people will receive that simple understanding. The devil wants you, number one, to doubt God. Yeah. Has God said that? Do you think God wants you Maybe, see, the devil wants to cause doubt to come into your life. Because in John chapter 20, verse 27, we understand wonderful doubting Thomas. He said, I was not there. I didn't see it. I don't think, now where did Thomas get all this doubt? Until this very day, all over the world, we preach about doubting Thomas. Thomas was affected by all the gossip, 
all the negative stuff that he himself doesn't find himself doubting Jesus. So the devil want to number one attack you is make you doubt. Never doubt what God is doing. God is on the throne. God is still God. With or without you, God is going to do it. So you might as well say, I believe, I believe, I believe. That's why there we got a song. Against your doubt, against your feeling, against your sight, against your mental intellect, say, I believe. Jesus, I believe. We just speak the word. We die. That's it. That's all. Thursday, I taught you all, the word of God is powerful. And that's why you got to say, Jesus, speak the word. It's done. I tried that. And he has blessed me and my family. I would say, God, against my emotion, against this enemy attacking my brain and making me, dividing it and trying to analyze it, I believe your word. It's done. And it's done. I receive the blessing of the Lord. So we need to do that. You are not going to live according to your emotion. You have emotion. But don't let the emotion override your faith. Faith is a substance of things hoped for. The evidence will come later, but you must first say, God, I believe. That's it. That's all Jesus wants you to say. I believe it. And then also the devil not only kills, steal, and destroy. He wants you to live in fear. Perfect love of God will cast out the fear. And that's why we have to be refilled with the Holy Ghost. We have to allow the Holy Ghost to lead us. In the Holy Ghost, there is no fear. In fact, Jesus said, why are you so fearful? Am I not with you? Didn't I promise you that I will be with you? Why are you fearful? You know, we should not. Amen. And I know fear is real. Fear is real. And I have faced. I mean, in the early years of my ministry, where a guy bring a machete and put it in front of my face and say, I'm going to split you. I mean that I, I, today I have one at home. Somebody left it in my old house. You know, that is not a, something to play with. It's about this long and it's sharp. I use it to cut down papaya tree. Whoosh. There goes the papaya tree. Cut any tree, not too big. La. I mean, quite good. One slash. Don't go down. Two slashes. Until third one. <laughs> so the thieves come to my house, better be watch out. I will go into my storeroom and take this. And then I become the ninja samurai. I will slash, slash, slash. No, I won't do that. Lah. In Jesus' name, I hope that will not happen. But the enemy wants to put you in fear. When you have cancer, suddenly the enemy say, you're going to die, you're going to die. Chemo, 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 chemo. Put you into fear. <laughs> Instead of believing God to heal you and, you know, set you, or if you die, you die in the Lord. Suddenly you have fear. It's easy to say, now I went through COVID. I was in ICU. You ask me fearful. I'm fearful, my body. Uh, you know? But somehow the Holy Ghost gives you that peace. If you die, you die in the Lord. It is God's will for you to live. But if it is not God's will for you to live, you die, you die in the Lord. That is swallow up in victory. So because you have given your life to Jesus, don't live in fear. Don't allow the devil in any time of your life to put fear into you. If you find yourself in any situation, suddenly fear. Suddenly the police came knocking at the door. Pastor did that. I ran and hide underneath the bed. And the police came knocking on the door. I hide underneath the bed. I have to confess the fear. I mean, I'm flesh. But I repent and ask, Jesus, with you there is no fear. So next time the police came knocking on the door, I say, hey, hello, welcome. But it's not the policeman, it's the saints. Saints of the Most High God. 
But you shouldn't fear, you know. I mean, why fear? If they throw you into jail, so be it. The apostles never fear. And they were thrown in jail and beaten, but still they sing song unto the Lord. That means they don't have fear. They just learn to be free of guilt and condemnation. And they're able to worship God and praise God. And this is what, when you are free of guilt and condemn condemnation, will do for you. And then also, in life, we always feel insecure. Yes, I'm talking to young people here, you know, and I'm talking to myself. We will go through insecure. I'm not secure. I don't have a job. I'm not secure. I don't have a, a honey, honey. Yeah. I'm not married yet. I'm not, I'm not secure. If you have Jesus, you are secure. In fact, the Bible says you are secure in his love. Amen. Because in heaven, there's going, not going to be father, mother, brother, sister. Husband or wife, children or, or parents don't have. In heaven, we are all brothers and sisters in the Lord. So why feel insecure? So next time you remind yourself, you know, you're not secure because, you know, you don't have parents or you don't have, you know, the honey, honey. But in heaven, you will bow down to Jesus. So there is no need for husband and wife and all that. We are all going to be children of the Most High God. And this is where it is so important that you are secure in Jesus Christ. So don't let the enemy come and then make you feel you don't have love enough. You are loved. You are loved by Jesus. In fact, you know, do you know what? Jesus loved you. That he said, when I go away, I will pray for you. Can you believe that? Every day Jesus is praying for you. As much as you're praying to him, he's praying for you. He pray, your faith fail not. That's what Jesus wants to do. And then also, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, the more uninvolved you become in the body of Christ, it is harder to preserve your faith. That means to say, uh, it is not easy to follow Jesus in a world that doesn't conform. If you don't conform to his ways, don't avoid church. You know why Jesus said, when I go, you're in the body, you're in the church. We need the church. It's just like everyone here got a home. If you don't have a home, all around the world, they call them homeless. And I pray that none of us Christians are homeless. Do you know how homeless people are like? You just go to Otaraya at night. You find homeless sleeping, unprotected with a cardboard, and then you know you have compassion. And then you feel the rain, the wind, especially if it is Western country, snowing time, you'll be shaking. It is not right for Christian to be homeless. Christian need to come to church. A sense of belonging, love, the body. Saints of God should not be out in the world, not going to church, Sunday, homeless. Of course, now they are Zoom online. Praise the Lord. I cannot see you, but you see me. And all I see is this little iPhone and Zooming to pastor and you're listening to pastor. But how much great if you are here, you feel at home. You are not in your home, but you are in this home, the home of the Lord Jesus Christ. But praise the Lord anyhow. Pastor, love you, but don't stay home. Come to this home. 
This is the home of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is your home. You are at your home. You need to come to this home. Every Sunday, the home of the Lord Jesus Christ. But I, of course, I know some are sick, not feeling well, and so forth. We pray for you. We love you. Like they say, we love ya. We love ya. Praise God. This is a little bit of trying to get those at home to be excited. And so, you don't want to be led astray. The devil wants you to be led astray. That's why there's a prodigal son story. The devil work on the prodigal son. See, your father don't love you. Everything is the other brother, the birthday. Blah, blah, blah. You know, the devil will bring in jealousy. Condemnation again. Guilt. Okay. And then in the midst of anger, the son, the pack up and leave. Try to make the father feel guilty. But actually, it turns out he is the one that is in guilt and condemnation. You know why? The father allowed him. And then when he started eating pig's food, lichong, baboy, they eat the food, and then he got to eat along with the baboy, the lichong. And then he realized, oh my goodness, my servant, my father's servant is eating better food than I'm eating all this pig food. When I was young, I have some relative in Jinjiang, they rare pigs. And one day they asked me, boy, come, you make this coconut husk that they don't want, all the dry husk. Mix it, they bring the water lily, they chop it up, and then they mix it, and then they cook it. So I did all that work, and the coconut husk, the time I was a young boy, I was hungry. Cut all the water lily, and, and then cook it. And I smell and I say, wow, this one, uh, this soup, uh, this whatever you call it, smells too good. Uh. I almost wanted to try it because I was hungry. I think somehow the coconut husk, okay, the shredded coconut, uh, or they squeeze out the mud already, mixed with the water lily, the chop, like vegetable, you know, like a gumbo. I said, oh, you smell good. Uh. Good thing I never tried it. Otherwise, I identify myself with the prodigal son. I ate the pig's food. So thank God I did not do that. So you see, the devil wants to lead you astray. Don't go to church. Don't spend time with Sister Hawaii prayer meeting. Go somewhere, go shopping. There you are. I'm helping you, Sister Hawaii. Don't, don't stay six o'clock there. Go somewhere. Go watch a movie. Go to the cafe there and chill out. And chill out with the smoothie or latte. Chill out there. Play with your handphone. Go astray. Go astray. And then Sunday you come. Where were you? Prayer meeting. Guilt. Condemnation. There you go. The devil achieved it. Suddenly you feel guilty. I lie. Prayer meeting. I was there. Chilling out in Bukit Bintang. I didn't go stay on Zoom and join in the prayer meeting. You see, the enemy works in so many ways. We don't realize it. But the ultimate aim of the devil is to kill, to steal, the joy and everything that the world wants to give you, destroy you. Don't allow. The devil is working in many ways to take you away from God. And he starts by guiltiness and condemnation. But if you stay in Jesus, don't leave not growing. You need to blossom. Like my papaya trees. They bless everyone with papaya. If you have not received a papaya from pastor, tell me. I will bring papaya for you. No problem. Blessing from the Lord. And then the devil in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 was it to say, this is what Paul told the saints, we are hard pressed on every side. So Paul said, my life, our lives, everything is precious. You know, sometimes the pressure, you know, many of you use a pressure cooker. You know why it need to be locked? So that it will build it up. The pressure. Psst. 
and fried chicken. It keep building up. And then you have to release the steam. If you don't release, it will eventually explode because the pressure has a certain limit. And once it reached the limit, it cannot go over the, once it go over the limit, it's explosion. You know why I'm saying that? I used to be a Kentucky Fried Chicken chef. Yeah, I handle four pressure cooker. So one day I didn't know that this chicken over fried became black chicken. Jollibee, black chicken, over fried. You know what happened to the pressure cooker? It shot up and punched a hole in the ceiling. That's how powerful the pressure cooker is. I ran out of the kitchen. Boom! And there go this heavy lid. And the chicken flew everywhere. Black chicken, as black as charcoal. And then, I, good thing I ran out of the kitchen. Kitchen got nobody in it except me. I was not able to handle four pressure cooker sizzling at the same time. Kentucky Fried Chicken. Now you enjoy your Kentucky Fried Chicken. But I work there, I know. And so we need to realize when we come to church, when we sing the song, when Sister Rose and the team, the musician, the pressure is released. Psst. All the worries, all the anguish, all the unhappiness, all the condemnation, all the guilt. And then after Sunday service, you feel so good. Come, let's go have lunch, Brother Super. Because he's so super. Hallelujah. Yeah, really. You think what? When we come together in church, the worship, you think you're ministering to God? God is ministering to you. In the presence of the Lord, there is liberty. In the presence of the Lord, there is healing. You are set free. Your spirit is healed. The pressure is released. And you can leave this place, no condemnation and no guilt. Let's clap to the Lord. Let's thank the Lord, Jesus. You see, God don't want you to fail in life. But if you do fail in life, it is not your brother or your sister. It's not nobody. It's not even Malaysia. It's not even Philippines. It's not even Pakistan. It is you. Because God wants you to face your faith in Him. Your faith must be in Him. Not even in yourself. Because we serve a faithful God. And He wants to keep your faith intact. In closing, Revelation chapter 12, verse 10. This is what it says. I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of Christ have come. For the accuser of our brothers have been thrown down, who accuses them day and night before our God. Satan, the accuser of you and I. You must remember, Satan was cast out of heaven. And the Bible says he has come to you and I today. And every day, every night, he's accusing you. He's accusing you to bring you into guilt and condemnation. So I pray this morning, you will not choose to live your life under guilt, under condemnation. You need to say, Jesus, where your spirit is, there is liberty. And everybody wants liberty. Everybody wants freedom. And everyone wants to be set free. Free from guilt and condemnation. The problem will always be the problem in the world. There is going to be problem that will come face to you, but you need to realize, I don't need it. I have Jesus. I will trust in him. I will continue to worship him. I will continue to exalt him because I need to receive the light from heaven. 
Nothing should hinder my growth. Nothing should stop my growth. And I will bloom. I will be like a tree planted by the river of the Holy Ghost. I will bring forth. I will be fruitful. In Jesus' name, let's all stand. Amen. What is stopping you today? Let me ask you, what is stopping you? Because the devil will be there. He will accuse you just as he has accused Job. For centuries, he has been doing that. He has accused me. Amen. From people around me. The same thing with you. Every one of us are not spare. But I choose to say, God is my advocate. God is my deliverer. I refuse to be brought under the spirit of fear, of condemnation, of guilt. Amen. As we worship the Lord, musician, I want us to reach out to God. I'm speaking to wonderful. You might say, Pastor, am I wonderful? Well, in the eyes of God, you are wonderfully and fearfully made. That's what the Bible says. And you need to believe that. And this morning, perhaps you are facing some mountains. Perhaps you are facing some of these enemies attack. I want you to realize, just say, Jesus, I'm your child. Jesus, by your grace, you don't judge me as how the world would judge me. You don't judge me like how the synagogue, how the priest, how those who knows well was with the Lord judge me. You judge me because you love me. You will not condemn me, but you will come to help me to be free. So let's reach out to Jesus. Amen. Let the Lord touch you today. Set you free. Don't live under guilt and condemnation. And those of you at home, don't live under guilt and condemnation because, oh, pastor preached to me already. I didn't go to church. I'm at home. No, 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 no. Pastor is just preaching what God tells to encourage, forsake not the assembling of ourselves together because you need to be inspired. You need to come and shake hands with your brothers and sisters. You need to come and look eyeballs to eyeball to your brother and sister and say, God is so good to me and God is so good to you. We need to do that. Let's reach out to God this morning. Thank you.